This is a brief lecture about the metric system and unit conversion method of calculations. And both of those will be used throughout chemistry, so uh, very important topics. All right, so the metric system, which is also referred to uh, more recently as the SI system, System International, and the key base units for the metric system for length is meter, mass is kilogram, um, so it's, that's kind of a surprise. You would think the base unit would be gram, but it is kilogram. Seconds is the metric unit for time. Temperature, the official metric unit, is Kelvin, but we also use Celsius quite a bit, just never Fahrenheit. And for the amount of a substance, metric unit is the mole. And we won't be using electric current, so we won't worry about that right now. Okay, these are the prefixes you should have handy. I would jot those down or print them out and have them handy. Um, the ones that we will use more often range from mega, which is basically a million. It's 1 times 10 to the 6 meters. And we will da use down through mm, primarily micro, sometimes nano. But a microgram, for example, is uh, 0.000001 gram. So those are the prefixes that we will use commonly. All right, so to touch on each of the base units, the meter is slightly longer than a yard. Um, kilogram or mass, and actually, honestly, most of the time we will be using grams um, for uh, mass. It's important to know that mass is not the same thing as weight. Weight is actually mass times the effect of gravity. Okay, the metric unit for time again is second, and these are just kind of little interesting facts about time that you don't have to read unless you want to. All right, and Kelvin is the official SI unit for temperature, but as I said before, um, we will often use Celsius also. Um, it is very important to know, and I'll repeat this throughout the um, semester that temperature is a measure of the kinetic energy that matter possesses. So as temperature goes up, so does kinetic energy. Kelvin versus Celsius. We will use both of those um, measurements of temperature. The conversion from one to the other is shown. I'm boxing it in at the bottom. Uh, there are no negative Kelvin measurements, okay? So if you see a negative temperature, it is Celsius. Kelvin starts at zero. There are no negative Kelvin, okay? So the Kelvin temperature will always be larger than the Celsius. Notice how you get from Celsius to Kelvin is you add 273 to whatever the Celsius value is. So the Kelvin value will always be larger. Why do we bother with Kelvin? Why didn't we just stay with Celsius, which is based on the um, melting point and boiling point of water? Kelvin was, without boring you or going into more detail than I need to, basically uh, the scientist Kelvin took a number of gases and measured the volume of these gases and, and as well as the pressure, but we'll look at volume now. Um, as a function of temperature and found that the volume of all of the gases, as you would expect, decreases at lower temperatures. Okay, things kind of tend to shrink at lower temperatures and that all of the gases, regardless of what the gas was, um, looked like they would end up at some magical temperature um, at which their volume would be zero on that unattainable but theoretical temperature was called absolute zero and we defined that as zero Kelvin. So absolute zero again is a theoretical temperature. It is theoretically impossible to reach that. 
That is defined as the temperature at which all kinetic energy is zero, all movement ceases, uh, which is impossible. Um, but there, from there came the Kelvin scale. All right, probably more important, because I think most of you have been exposed in the metric system, is the method by which we do unit conversion and solve most of our chemistry problems. And so this unit conversion method, I'm going to use some examples to show you the method. Um, the examples will be quite easy, but they can get pretty complicated, so it's important that you understand this method. So in addition to being called unit conversion, it's also called dimensional analysis. It's really important when you use this method to show your work, to include units, and show what you're canceling out. All right, so basically the bottom line when you're doing unit conversion or dimensional analysis is you're going to start with some given information that a problem gives you. That given information is going to have a unit. Make sure you include that unit. Um, and we're going to always need a conversion factor. What is a conversion factor? It's, for example, 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. That's a conversion factor. But the conversion factor for our calculations will be arranged in a ratio form. Okay, So you would take this equality and you would arrange it in a ratio form. For example, you might say 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. So you'd arrange it like a ratio instead of an equality. So, okay, so for example, let's say that we were asked to convert from 8 meters to inches. And so 8 meters would be our given information. And always start the problem with your given information. Make sure you include your units. And then we need some conversion factors in order to get to the inches that it asks. Well, you'll either be given the conversion factor, or if it's a real simple one, um, we would expect you to know it. For example, 100 centimeters equals 1 meter, and that's a conversion that you would be expected to know. And so what you do, in this case you've got, it's a two-step problem, but the units of your given information, which is meters, have to be, show up in the denominator of your conversion factor, and that's because you want to cancel out the units of your given information. You don't want meters anymore, you're trying to get to inches. So, and now, if you were to conduct this calculation, it'd be 8 meters times 100 centimeters. Um, the units you have at this point are centimeters, but again, we need inches. So you need another conversion factor to get you from centimeters to inches. That one, I'm sure you'd have to look up. Most people don't have that memorized. But it is true, in fact, that there are 2.54 centimeters in one inch. Okay. So when you arrange that in ratio form, you can see now that the centimeters cancel. Just like in algebra, um, things on the diagonal cancel, so those units cancel. And what we have at the end then is 8. You multiply everything across the numerator and you multiply everything across the denominator. So we have 8 times 100 times 1, those are the three things on top, divided by, and all we have in the denominator, let's see, we have 1 and 2.54, okay? And so then what we have is, let's see, 800 divided by 2.54, and that equals 315. You will likely have to work quite a few problems in dimensional analysis to get comfortable with it, um, unless you already have quite a bit of experience with it. There's one situation I want to point out to you that you have to be particularly careful with, and that is when you square or cube, use some type of exponent with your units. Um, and what I want to point out to you is, just a reminder, if you have something like 2.54 centimeter squared, that means that you have to square both the number, 
so it would be 2.54 squared and you also have to square the unit centimeter squared okay and so I'm going to work a problem for you doing that but um, just keep that in mind all right so for example this problem is asking you basically to convert from cubic centimeters to cubic meters so as always we start with a given information which is 1500 cubic centimeters and I left out all my multiplication signs there we go alright so what does cubic centimeter mean that means we've multiplied centimeter by itself three times so we have three centimeters in there so in order to cancel out centimeters and get meters we have got to do it three times okay so in order to get rid of this centimeter cubed we have to divide by centimeter cubed okay so what exactly when we simplify this does that give us well here's our given information 1500 centimeter cube and when we multiply through by the numerator and the denominator of course the numerator 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 remember that you've got to multiply all the units by each other too so one meter cubed is on top of this conversion factor 100 times 100 times 100 that's two four six zeros then again you need to multiply the units by each other too so that's centimeter cube All right. so when you do all that you can finally cancel out the centimeter cubed and your final answer is 0 0.0015 meter cubed so look at that, take your time, and um, hopefully start to understand that. All right, let's do a sample here. And what I recommend is that you turn off the video, try to work out this sample, and I have given you the conversion factor you need right here. And this should be a relatively easy one to see if you have the concept. Once you think you have it worked out, turn the video back on and see if you got it right. All right, here we go. The given information, and that's the information that's given in the problem, problem, 115 pounds. Always start with that. We need to arrange our conversion factor. I'm going to put it in equality form first. 454 gram equals 1 pound. We need to arrange our conversion factor in ratio form so that the unit of pound is in the denominator and cancels out. So one pound goes in the denominator, so pounds will cancel out. And the rest of the conversion factor goes in the numerator, 454 grams. Now I'm going to multiply across the numerator. In other words, 115 times 454 going to multiply across the denominators and that just gives me a 1 and therefore my final answer is 52,210. What are the units of my final answer? Grams. Now I have kind of an offside question for you. Thinking of significant figures that we learned in one of the other lectures, how many significant figures should this answer be reported with? In order to determine that, you need to count how many significant figures are in the numbers that you multiplied. There are three sig figs in this. There are three sig figs in this. Neither one of those are exact numbers. They're both uh, measured values. So your answer can only have three sig figs. So how do I report this answer, which is what my calculator gave me, with three sig figs? Well, I can include one, two, three sig figs. And I can't just drop the rest of them, but they cannot be considered significant. So. I change the remaining ones that aren't significant to zeros, and that is my number reported with the correct number of sig figs. 
Here's a problem that's a little twist on making sure that you understand the concept of units and unit conversions. How would you answer this question? Whoopsie daisy. How would you answer this question? Okay. Well, if you think you have an idea, even if you don't think you have an idea, I would recommend turning off the video to playing around with it a while and seeing if you can get it. In order to be able to legitimately compare these different values, all of the units must be the same. That's an important concept for you to remember throughout the course, too. That if you're comparing multiple values, all those values need to be in the same unit. Okay, It's like the old adage of comparing apples to oranges. So let's get them all in the base unit of meters. So we'll keep the 0 .600 meters and let's start converting the rest of them to meters. So we'll use unit conversion to do that. I have 60 millimeters and I need to know the conversion factor to get from millimeters to meter. You might have to look on the table you have for conversion factors. You need to get familiar with using that and these are very common conversions that you really need to memorize. So I happen to know that for every one meter there are 1,000 millimeters. And so 60 millimeters equals 60 divided by 1,000 and that equals, I'm going to run out of room, point 06 meters. Okay, so now let's convert 6,000 centimeters using unit conversion. 6,000 centimeters, so I need the conversion factor to get from centimeters to meters, and I know that for every one meter there are 100 centimeters. So multi multiplying across the top, well centimeters crosses out, multiplying across the top I have 6,000 divided by 100 on the bottom and so that gives me 60 when I put it into my calculator and so let's see, let me fill these in. 60 millimeters is 0.06 meters 6,000 centimeters is 60 meters. See, now they're all in the, in the same units. And of course, we're keeping number four, so 0 0.60 meters. And now we just have to figure out kilometers. So I'll move up here for that one. Let's see, 0 0.060 kilometers. And I need the conversion factor, which takes me from kilometers to meters. And I know that for every one meter, I have, I might do this the other way around. Let's see. I know that for every one kilometer, I have 1,000 meters. Kilometers large. So multiplying across, and of course, canceling out kilometers. I have 0 0.06 times 1,000 and there's only a 1 on the bottom and so 0 0.06 times 1,000 is 1, 2, 3, 60 meters. Okay, so here are my values all together, all in the same units which of these is the smallest, it says. The answer is 1. 0.06 meters is smaller than any of the others. Okay, So get real familiar, especially with unit conversions and the metric system. That's it for this um, short lecture.